what was your relationship like with the fans when you were a player? Well, I always, I always used to think I could sense when they thought we needed to get a grip. Mm -hmm. uh, or if we were struggling in games, you'd sense her in the crowd. And I used to try and be the the catalyst for that. Uh, I could sense the crowd wanted us to be more aggressive or something to happen or mm -hmm. somebody to put a tackle in to get them going as well. So mm. I was I always sensed the crowd. It was always there. I mean... Some some players like to to block the crowd out and just play within the the white lines. Whereas I I went over the lines as well, just to sense get a sense of where the crowd was, and uh, and I think the the United fans understood that's what I was doing, and I, I was trying to um, amplify w what their feelings were on the yeah. pitch. Um, and I always had a had a great great relationship with the. United fans in, in that regard because I just think they, they understood uh, whenever I played for United I was always going to give my best So after the FA Cup the next trophy that came was the Cup Winners' Cup was that extra special for you because the final well the, the game was against Barcelona um, I, Well I, en I enjoyed it obviously it was, uh, it was important that we as a club uh, flew the flag for, for English football because mm -hmm. we'd been out of European football for five years we were first team back in after the the ban after Heisel, so uh, we wanted to fly the flag, as I said, and we wanted to make a real statement about English football. It's been mm -hmm. away for five years, but we're still we're still here, and we're still um, a league to be concerned about. So uh, yeah, to get to the final was fantastic, and uh, um, the final itself wasn't a great game, if if I recall. I am seeing it from start to finish on too many occasions since but um, I have watched it and uh, it wasn't a great game ever. the quality was <laughs> sadly lacking but who, who cares doesn't matter uh, yeah, it doesn't cares? matter we were able to win win the trophy and it, it was uh, it was, a, it was a great night I mean everybody talks about Rotterdam yeah. and um, I remember when we turned up at the stadium there was just reds everywhere um, mm -hmm. don't think I, I saw a Barcelona fan until I actually got into the stadium and they, they had a, a section behind one goal, I think, and they didn't even fill that, whereas the rest yeah. of the stadium was all red. So uh, you sense that it was going to be our night. I always remember, and I've actually got a picture of it, where the two teams are lined up as we're just waiting for the referee to to blow the whistle. And uh, it just started to rain, and it was all misty and it was a bit cold. And I looked across and a couple of their lads were like <laughs> <laughs> rubbing their arms and bouncing up and down trying to keep warm. And I'm thinking, these this yeah. man don't fancy it today. It was, it was a typical British yeah. British football day in my view. So I'm thinking, yeah, we can, we've got a chance here. Do you ever regret taking that goal off, Bruce? No, you're joking, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, always, uh, I always say I was just Probably doing one of your best finishes. <laughs> I don't usually score from that close in, if I'm honest. <laughs> but uh, no, the reality was, in fact, it was a great ball in. I'm not sure who put it in. It might have been Robbo, actually. Or Sharpie, was it? Was it Sharpie? Yeah, it might have been. And uh, Bruce had great header. And, just yeah, make sure. Absolutely, he was going in. <laughs> but I was just doing my job. I always uh, throw this in. And I didn't think it was going to go over the line because it was two defenders yeah. flying in. So I thought, well, I better, better just knock it over the line. So that's what I did. But the everybody, second, the second one's special, though. Yeah, yeah, second one was. But, but the first one, everybody ran to Brucey and jumped yeah, on yeah. and said, Well done, Brucey, great goal. And I just turned and went to the halfway line and I looked up on, and the screen was on the opposite side of the pitch, behind the goal. And I looked up and hues and lights came up. I thought, that, That's okay, that would do me. So I got the benefit. So I don't think he was happy about it. <laughs> but I definitely got the second, second one. one. Yeah. Definitely got the second one. Did you always have that that technique to score goals like that? Was it something you, like, as in when you were younger and you were just kicking about with your friends? Um, no, I think it was con a consequence of, at that time I, I was playing well, so I was confident in my play. And I think that's really important that obviously if you're going into big games, you want to be confident that you were playing well. And I was at that point. And the actual situation, I think Robin knocked the ball through and the keeper, for whatever yeah. reason, I think it was Busquets' dad who uh, came in for that game. Um, he wasn't the, the regular goalkeeper. Uh, he missed out and uh, he was the reserve keeper and he came out and made this decision. He was way out of his 
penalty box and I skip past him and I'm thinking, well, this is an empty net. Obviously, he pushed me a, bit, a little bit wide and everybody thought, even the commentator, oh, yeah. Brian Moore, God bless him, he said, oh, he's, he's pushed wide, he's too far out. Um, but from my point of view, I just, well, I knew it was just an open goal. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, well, if I hit this ball towards the net, it's going to go in. But for whatever reason... Yeah, but you I didn't did, just hit it. Well, exactly. For like, whatever reason, I don't laces. know why I did it. It just... <laughs> Probably because I, I was confident that, that I could do it. Yeah. And I thought, right, I'm going to smash this. <laughs> and, and thankfully I did, because if, if I just side-footed towards the goal, there, yeah. uh, there was two defenders running back and they would have cleared it. So for whatever reason, fate, call it what you like, um, I made the decision to, to whack it. And thankfully it went in. <laughs> it's instinct, I guess. Yeah, instinct, fate, whatever it is. Manchester City came calling. Mm. Who At the time, were they now, was it... Thaxton Sinuatra, was he yeah. in charge at that point? So it was before the Abu Dhabi group that uh -huh. owned them now had invested. But so still they were improving and, and a lot of money had been spent. Was that a difficult decision to make? Because were you aware of that it could affect your relationship here? Um, it wasn't something that I'd, I took into account only because I viewed myself not as an ex-Man United player there. I, used, yeah. uh, I viewed myself as a professional football manager. Mm -hmm. Um, and I knew that I was going to leave Blackburn and I needed to, to leave where my star was quite high. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we just, we'd got top six position by virtue of the league. Mm -hmm. uh, we qualified for Europe, we'd got to the FA Cup semi-finals and, and I'd had a good four years there and I felt right, now's the time. Um, but if I was going to make the next step, um, there wasn't too many options where I felt mm. would be better than Blackburn. And if you looked at it at the time, obviously Sir Alex wasn't going anywhere. Arsene Wenger wasn't going anywhere. Chelsea weren't employing British managers. Arsenal, um, I've said Arsenal, yeah. Liverpool. Yeah. I wasn't going to Liverpool. <laughs> just on that one. So all the top clubs were all taken for the foreseeable future. And I just looked at Man City and thought, well, it's a good stadium. Good crowd base, lots lots of fans, a big big platform. I'm thinking, okay, I'll go there. It didn't really cross my mind that it might upset United fans. It didn't sway my decision because I just thought that it was the next step in mm. my in my managerial career. Um, problem was when I got there, it was actually a club that was at lower level than the one I had left. Blackburn was way above in terms of facilities and and mentality of the club and, and the professionalism of the club at that time. And I wasn't to know that until I walked through the door, if I'm honest. So um, so that's how it was. So it, it wasn't really, the description of the club given to me wasn't really what, what it said on the tin. What was it like coming back here to be a manager? For City against United? That, I always viewed it as, uh, I think... But, United fans maybe thought I had something against United or, or some, something against Sir Alex. Mm. wasn't the case, no. not at all. It was just that I viewed United as the best club, um, best fans, best manager, everything was the best here. Mm -hmm. And if, if I wanted to be a better manager, I had to judge myself against the best. The best. So whenever I went up against United, I was desperate to beat them mm. because they were the best in my view in terms of resources and, and facilities and, and how they went about the business because I knew at first hand how, how good they were. There is, a, there is one game we have to talk about mm -hmm. of you coming back here, which is the Derby in 9-10. Mm -hmm. Michael Owen scoring the winner after seven minutes when there were six minutes of extra time. There was four minutes of extra time. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> was that? Yeah. <laughs> what was that like for you as a manager here? Because presumably from your side, it was very frustrating. Oh yeah, I mean, he, Bellamy scored, didn't he? Right, right, right about the ninetieth minute to make it three all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was a great game. I have it was one of the better derbies, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, superb. Clearly, I mean, it was so much drama in it. And Craig, you mentioned it. I think Rio had made Rio, a mistake yeah, yeah. near the halfway yeah. line, and and Craig had carried the ball all the way and slipped into the the keeper at this end. And um, you're thinking that's a game over. We'll take a point and. Um, 
all's fair and love and war and yeah. we could shake hands at the end and it was fine. And then Mr. Atkinson, Martin Atkinson, bless him, decided just to forget to look at his watch. Rightly so. <laughs> and he kept on thinking, well, you've got to blow, blow the whistle any, any second now. It's all over. He mm. put four up and I'm thinking, well, we're into seven minutes here. What's he doing? And then, <laughs> lo and behold, uh, it was a Giggsy. I think Giggsy might have played. Uh, yeah, he played, played, played well. Yeah, yeah. a hell of a ball. Yeah, and you see Michael Owen in that position, you think he's going to score because that's what he's done all his career. So to actually lose that game when, in my view, the game was over and, yeah. and we'd done okay and we, we got a point and that was massive for me just because, like I said, I wanted to go up against Sir Alex and if I could, beat him. If not, the next best thing was just to, to nick a draw at Old Trafford. But uh, unfortunately, Mr Atkinson took that, uh, <laughs> took that away <laughs> from me. But... Um, yeah, they were, they were great games. So I enjoyed whenever I came to Old Trafford. And even as a player, I came as a player as, uh, when I was at Chelsea and I uh, always enjoyed. Um, when, the, when the final whistle goes, there's a camera right in your face. Were you aware of that? Um, not to any great extent. I think that, that was the reality of, of the game at that time. And uh, you're always going to get manager cam in your face. And uh, if there's an incident or if they think you're perturbed as I certainly was <laughs> to, to put it mildly um, then they want reactions it's good drama that's what TV wants they want drama and reaction and an incident and yep. uh, just losing a point at Old Trafford under those circumstances obviously they, they were awful again the reaction um, probably a negative one from my point of view but uh, <laughs> yeah you're, you're aware of the cameras but that's part and parcel of the game these days 